If you want to learn the strategies to plan out the next four months of content, this video is for you. Last week, I taught a live webinar teaching you how to do this, and so many of you were not able to make it to the live webinar, so I thought, what if I take that video, back it up, chop it up to a bite-sized little YouTube video so that anybody who couldn't attend live could still learn from it. So that's what this video is, my live webinar that I taught last week, teaching you how to plan out four months of content. Let's go. Diving into what you can expect for today's call. First five minutes, this is what we're here for, right? We're doing the overview. I want to let you know exactly minute by minute what we're going to be going over so you have proper expectations of everything we're learning today. Then the next five minutes, I'm going to show you why right now, literally August and September, is the best time to go all in as a content creator, no matter what platform you're on, right now is the best time to get started. And I wanna show you proof of that. Next, we're gonna go over the winning platform and strategy combo. All of you who are here are interested in different platforms, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and that's okay. That is okay. So I wanna make sure that depending on the platform you're picking, you're choosing the right strategy to move forward. Then we're gonna go over, of course, what we all came here for. We're gonna get into the meat of everything. Four months of content strategy. I'll help you create your own posting strategy and content calendar. And of course, when we start plugging in our content into the content calendar, I'm going to teach you the three different types of content that you will be plugging in to your content calendar. And then after we complete our exercise and our strategy for the day, we're going to go over some next steps that you can take to see the best results and really fast track your growth as a creator. All right, keeping on track with why we are here today. How did we come here today? Why four months content strategy? What happened? So let's rewind. Two years ago, August 12th to be exact, 2021. I posted this to my Instagram stories. I was getting ready to batch a few YouTube videos and I was super excited. So I was like, oh, I'm looking good. Let me post the Instagram story. So I post this to my Instagram story. And next thing I know, I remember, I'm standing in my living room telling my husband, I think I'm fainting and falling to the floor and having my very first panic attack. I cannot, even to this day, I cannot remember for the life of me what happened in between that. All I know is my body knew something was happening. And so my body went to my husband <laughs> where I came to and fainted basically and had a panic attack, first ever panic attack. And this is when I was like in my peak content creator hustle bustle, right? I was the epitome of hustle culture for content creators. And after that day, I was in and out of the hospital for about three months, just like trying to figure out what the heck happened, what was wrong with me. And after three months of trying to figure ish out, the doctors were like, it's stress, it's stress. And I was super frustrated because that's not what I pictured the content creator life to be. That's not what I wanted for myself and my dreams. Like I always wanted to be like a YouTuber and full-time creator and showing up on Instagram. I was showing up, I was literally posting to Instagram every day, replying to comments, getting in my DMs, working on YouTube videos, filming. Like I showed up every day because that's what content creators were supposed to do. And it burned me out. It ruined lots of things for me. And so I figured this cannot this cannot be it. This cannot be how content creators are seeing success or are, are growing. There has to be another way to make it as a creator without reaching this point of burnout. So that's why we're here. I wanted to create a four month content strategy and I've been working on like, how do I best batch my content so I don't have to be on the hamster wheel? And that's the, the session we have today. So maybe you're here because you are on the same boat as me, right? You want to be a full-time content creator, but you don't want to be stuck on the hamster wheel of content creation, right? We don't want to, we don't want to be that creator that's posting every single day, right? Maybe you, want, you don't want to do that, but you still want to be a creator or maybe you just love organization and making systems, creating systems. Maybe that's you and you just want to keep your life and brain and creation organized. You heard four month content strategy and you're like, I'm there organization. <laughs> or maybe you're somebody who's just like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go all in. I'm going to put in the work and I want to see the results. I am at that point in my life where I'm just like, YOLO, who's, who says that anymore? <laughs> you want to go all in hundred percent and you're just ready to put in the work. So that is my prediction of why I think you're here. And I do believe all of us probably fit into one of these categories. Now I want to show you why right now is literally the best time to start 
the best time to start as a content creator. Literally, I mean, August and September. I know everybody's like, oh, right now is the best time. And it's like, whatever time of year. But I really mean August, September is the best time to start. So let me introduce you to Stephanie. This is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. This time last year, Stephanie had 8,000 followers on Instagram and was averaging about 20,000 reels per video, which is already great stats, right? It's already sounds great. It's already good. But after her and I were talking, she was just taking one of my courses. We, we were talking about a four, this four month content strategy and what she could do to implement it to see quicker results for her niche and for her goal of growing on Instagram. On September 8th, that's when Stephanie started her four month content plan. This post that circled apple, apple cider donuts, that was the first post she did for her four month content strategy. And that first post was on September 8th. This is what happened over the next four months. So from September through December, Stephanie posted 61 videos. That's about one every other day. 16 of those videos hit over 100,000 views. Seven of those videos hit over 1 million views. And the most watched video actually hit 36 million views. Yeah. Giving her a total of 58, over 58 million views from those 61 videos, helping her grow from 8,000 followers to 78,000 followers. And I actually just had a live on Instagram with Stephanie today. She also was able to completely replace her corporate income. In September, before she did this, she was considering like quitting content creation and pursuing, like just going back to being a teacher. And then after this, she completely replaced her, her, her corporate income, which is insane. So just from the four month content strategy, those are the results that you can get. And the best part is anybody can replicate this success without having to do the holiday content. So I know the examples we saw on Stephanie's account was very holiday focused because that's the best time of year, right? But it's still possible to replicate the same success. So I want to ask you, what would that be like if you saw those results this year at the end of December? Like today you'd made the decision and you're like, okay, I'm going to go all in. And by the end of December, that was your story. You were like, oh my gosh, I took this webinar from Millie. And then, and then my four months later, this is my results. Oh my gosh, that's so insane. Like, what would that feel like? How would your life change? What would that do for you? That sort of transformation is so possible. We saw Stephanie do it. I want to help all of you do it. So let's do it shall we let's begin step one we are doing it we're diving in step one the winning platform and strategy combo basically to see the best results and make sure that you're not wasting any time basically you want to make sure that the strategy that you're choosing to do works for the platform that you've chosen okay because there's so many different strategies out there and we have three different platforms we're going to be talking about. We have YouTube, we got Instagram, we got TikTok, and all of those algorithms behave so differently. So I want to make sure that you're not wasting your time putting effort into a strategy that's actually misplaced and supposed to be on a different platform. <laughs> okay. So that's what we want to talk about first. I want to make sure your strategy is going to the right place because if it's not on the right platform, you're not going to see results or at least it'll be very, very slow, slow draining results that are, will be discouraging. So let's make sure that you're doing it the right way. We got three main strategies. One, audience. Two, niche. Three, identity. These are the three strategies that we're going to be talking about today. And the first one, we've kind of all heard it, right? We already know picking a niche, 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 whatever you want to call it. This is the most common approach to social media. We already know when you pick an industry to focus on and you remain topically consistent in that industry, you're going to see success. The reason this is the most common example is because it works 100%. It is tried and true, the proven way to grow on any social media platform. So you just pick an industry and then you like keep talking within that same topic. For example, if you're in the fitness industry, all of your content that you're going to post is going to be related to fitness. And you're going to really dive in specifically. Maybe it's like fitness for women who are working out at home, right? And then from there, you could dive into, okay, well, let's do form videos, right? We want to make sure that our form is good. Let's do daily workouts that you could do at home. And even if you're trying to build muscle, here is what you could eat to really hit your protein goals, right? We are just 
really drilling it home on staying topically consistent. That's a strategy. We have all heard it. We all know it. Let's jump to audience. This is another strategy. And typically it's my second recommendation for people who don't know what they want their niche to be right? It's normal. It's, it's common. We're multi-passionate human beings. We have so many interests and it's hard to niche down. So an option, second recommendation is instead of focusing on a topic, focus on the audience that you want to be talking to. Who do you want to create content for? An example of this, instead of saying, oh, I'm going to focus on fitness. Maybe you just, maybe you're a college student and you want to make videos that attract other college students, right? That's the community. That's how you see your subscribers being built. It's other college students. So you're like, all right, well, what would college students like to watch videos on? Well, maybe they want videos like helping them balance work, school, and self-care. Maybe they want videos showing them how to decorate your dorm or really cost-effective meals that aren't top ramen, right? So you're just thinking about your audience and you're making content for them instead of having to stick to a specific topic. And then we have identity. So this one is actually the most complicated strategy to implement. I would not always recommend it. Very rarely would I recommend it. And it's typically used for those people who are like, I just want to be a lifestyle creator, right? I don't want to follow the rules. I don't want to do a niche. I don't want to do anything rule following wise, you know, those creators that are just like, I want to just lifestyle creator. That's what this strategy is. It's optimizing and leaning into who you are as a person, as an individual, and emphasizing the unique traits that you already have to attract people who relate to that. So this can be anything. And typically it's like, if you go this way, it's probably the most mundane thing that feels so normal to you, but is so relatable to others. Some examples of traits that you could lean into, you could lean into your relationship status, gender, culture, where you live, your hair type, career. So relationship status, I could just lean into the fact like, oh, I'm a married woman and I can make a bunch of relatable content about being a a wife or being married and just lean into that as my identity and then attract other people who can relate to that specific trait. When you know which strategy you want to focus on, then you could pick the platform that will best match the strategy. Of course, you can reverse engineer. So if you're like, well, Millie, I already know I want to focus on YouTube. You can use what I'm about to teach and reverse engineer it, but I'm going to first do the strategy approach, picking a strategy and matching it to the right platform. This is our little map. If you're going to niche down, which I actually recommend 95% of you to niche down, Okay, I hope most people actually. And if you choose this route, you can choose any platform. You can pick YouTube, you can pick Instagram, you can pick TikTok, and you will see success. So lucky for you, you could circle niche right now and circle one of these platforms and move on your merry way, move on to the next strategy. If you actually want to do the audience approach, then YouTube is going to be your best bet. The algorithm on YouTube was literally created to analyze audience behavior and study user behaviors. So that's going to be your best bet. Honestly, if audience approach is your strategy, YouTube was created for that. Now I will say you could do TikTok as well, but the algorithm on YouTube was built for this strategy. Next is your identity. If you want to really capitalize and lean into being a lifestyle creator just kind of creating any videos you want, but relating it back to your identity, TikTok is going to be the best place for you because the algorithm is studying each video individually. The videos don't have to relate to each other. So that's why TikTok is going to be the best place for that strategy. And then of course, there is a way to use identity as a strategy on YouTube. There is, if you're really good at SEO and keywords, it is possible. So I did want to highlight that, but again, it works best on TikTok. So this is the map of all the different kind of areas you could go and the approaches you could have, depending on the strategy you want to implement. And again, those kind of like optional, you could go here, you could go here, but really I want to focus on those bold lines. Now we're going to choose our posting frequency. This one's going to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We could bust through this and get to the uh, content strategy. 
basically before you start creating, before you press record, before you start doing research to figure out what video ideas you're going to do, I want you to choose how often to post. Okay. This is going to be a schedule that you know that you can realistically keep up with for the next three to four months. September, October, November, December, pick a posting frequency that you can stick to. It's going to be realistic for you. And these are the frequencies that we'll see a lot. What people usually tend to lean towards for their posting frequencies. You have YouTube is once a week. Instagram is three to five times a week. And TikTok is daily. This is pretty standard and what people will recommend like, okay, if you could do this, you're in the clear, you'll be good to go. But I want to encourage you you can do whatever the heck works for you. Okay. You can do what works for you. This is Kelly and Kelly chose to post one reel every weekday, Monday through Friday. So she posted Monday through Friday. She even said like, I picked a commitment that I knew I could handle and would not burn me out. So that, that is what what worked for her. And with that, she was able to grow 40,000 followers in six months because she just picked what worked for her. And if five times a week is still like, okay, that's still a lot for me. That's okay. I want to introduce you to Donna. This is Donna. Um, She committed to posting twice a week. And from posting twice a week, she was able to land a brand collaboration with her local news just from creating quality content and proving to an audience that like, Hey, I am just showing up consistently. I have a platform. I have a presence that is active. And just from showing up two times a week, these are the results that you can get. So pick whatever works for you. Now, are we ready to plan out the next four months of content together? We're going to move on to the next step. So what we're going to do, we are going to fill this out together. Basically, starting from the top, we want to start our content research and we want to make sure that our content research is evolving around our niche. Remember, this is the strategy we're focusing on. So with your niche, we have the industry that you want to focus on. So what's that industry that you're in? For this example, let's say I want to be a travel content creator. Now we have type. Type is what what type of industry? Okay, so you want to say what type of travel? What type of fitness, what type of gardening, whatever your industry is, ask yourself, okay, well, like what kind of blank is it for me? Let's say I don't really have the money to travel everywhere. I want to be able to travel everywhere. That's the lifestyle goal, but I live in San Diego. So let's just create San Diego content for right now. So right now my page is just going to focus on San Diego travel and target is actually going to be your target audience. Who is your content for? My content is going to be for tourists. Like maybe I don't want to create content for locals. It's more so for tourists because if I want to travel the world, eventually I want to get the attraction of like people around the world, tourist boards, maybe. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these three things and create a beautiful sentence that will describe your niche. So for me, that is going to be San Diego travel guide for tourists. That is my niche. San Diego, I'm going to be a San Diego travel guide for tourists. Now we're going to pick our sub topics. These are kind of the Under this category, San Diego Travel Guide for Tourists, what kind of content do I think they would be interested in? What sort of content relates to this? We could do like general travel tips, activities, like what to do when you're in San Diego, right? What do you do? And then we could do uh, things to do, places to see, so sites, you know, touristy spots, and we could also do what to eat, food recommendations, restaurant recommendations. So these are kind of the subtopics that I'm interested in posting about. We're going to move to the next step and utilize search engines to give us some suggestions, some phrases that we can implement into our content. So search engines are basically places like YouTube, Google, It has a search bar. People are typing search inquiries on there. And we're going to use that to our advantage to come up with content ideas. So now we're jumping to the search engine brain dump. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my niche or I'm going to take my topics and put them into a search engine to see what sort of suggestions I get. 
So for example, let's just take San Diego. I'm going to take San Diego and I'm going to plug that into YouTube. San Diego. And I'm going to see if the suggestions are anything related to my niche or my goals. So we have, let me scan, let me scan. I'm not seeing anything that's like I'm interested in as a travel creator and that's okay. So let's space bar and let's add San Diego T. I don't know, press a random letter on your keyboard. Don't do anything else and see what pops up. San Diego things to do. I love that phrase. So that kind of fits my activities one. So I'm just going to put San Diego things to do here. This is just, I'm taking it word for word, the suggested phrase. And this is basically telling me what people are currently looking for when it comes to San Diego. San Diego tour. That could be like a good vlog idea. So let me just write that down. Would that be a activity? General tips. I'll just put it general tips. San Diego tour. Next we have San Diego travel guide. I love that one. That's a good general tip. San Diego travel guide. I'm just, again, looking at these phrases, seeing if anything fits. San Diego travel. Ooh, tourist attractions. Oh, yeah. What does that fit? Activities, sites. Could be a good site. San Diego tourist attractions. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just scanning these suggested phrases, plugging in ones that make sense for my niche, San Diego tour, San Diego travel guide. And, and I'm not doing anything with them. I'm just, these are the ones that relate to my niche. I'm writing them down. That is all I'm doing. Cool. Another option or another place to do this is TikTok. I love using TikTok for this. So if I just type in San Diego here in TikTok, I'm reading again, what are these top search results? What are people currently looking for? San Diego things to do. We already got that one. San Diego hidden gems. Love that. San Diego food spots. Also love that. Okay. Let me write this down, write this down. Um, hidden gems could really cover any of these topics. It could be like an act a site that's a hidden gem or even like a food spot that's a hidden gem. So it looked like San Diego food was a good result. Um, I'll write San Diego hidden gem here because it fits with food. I'm also going to do San Diego hidden gem here because it fits with sites and like things to see. And then what's also cool, if you're doing this on your phone, if you search San Diego and you scroll down, there's going to be a section that says others searched for on the desktop. It says accounts. So if you see the others search for, it's going to have more of those phrases for you to kind of look through and see what other people are searching for. So if I did San Diego food, food spots, foodies, foodies, 2023 food spots. I like how food spots is a specific phrase, San Diego food spots. I also saw 2023. So I'm just going to write that in there. So I remember it. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm using these search engines to generate some phrases to write down ones that make sense with my niche. You don't have to come up with the video idea yet. Just write down those phrases. And then the other one that I wanted to show you was answer the public. So if I come over to answer the public and I type in San Diego, this is something, by the way, you only get three searches a day. So just keep that in mind. I type in San Diego, I press search. It's going to spit out the top searches on, on Google that all answer or that all ask surrounding the who, what, when, where, why, how type of questions. So here's the R category. Top R searches are, are San Diego beaches warm? Are San Diego beaches safe? Are San Diego beaches good? Which San Diego beaches Ooh, allow dogs. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna just put that because it kind of, it might be an attraction. Which San Diego beaches allow dogs? That's an interesting one that I could potentially make a video on. And I'm just kind of going through all these top searches to see if anything makes sense for me, my niche, what San Diego is known for, what San Diego weather is like. And again, you can scroll down. There's even more. So there's more searches. It's just telling me those top searches with that specific phrase. If you're doing travel, maybe I could, maybe San Diego isn't giving me the results I want. So maybe instead of San Diego, I'm going to put like San Diego travel or San Diego food. I'm going to 
get more specific and plug in not just my niche, but I'm also going to help it and give it like San Diego with one of my topics, San Diego food, San Diego activities to see what people are searching for in relation to those ideas. All right. So then what you're going to do after you have a list of these phrases, you're going to turn these phrases into video ideas. Let's say San Diego, what I really want to run with is this San Diego things to do. So here I'm just going to actually now finish the search. I'm going to click search for San Diego things to do, and I'm going to see what is trending. What's working in this video idea right now? What, what is working, right? So we have 26 things to do in San Diego, top seven things to do in San Diego. So it's a lot of best things to do in San Diego. So maybe my first video will be San Diego things to do. Maybe my next page, we turn content research into video topics or video ideas. Maybe I'm going to say top 10 things to do in San Diego. I'll say instead of in San Diego, I'll say when visiting San Diego. Because remember, this is for tourists. So I want to say when visiting San Diego and I could even add like as a tourist, right? So that's my video idea. Love that. Excited about it. Oh, here we go. 10 things tourists might do on a first visit to San Diego. That's great. Maybe instead of 10 things to do, I'll say 10 tourist activities to do on your next visit to San Diego, right? So I'm just utilizing these titles to come up with either a YouTube title idea or if you're not doing YouTube, these are going to be your hooks. These are your hooks. This is what's going to grab your viewers' attention on Instagram Reels, on TikToks. You're going to start the video by saying, here's the 10 best things to do if you're visiting San Diego as a tourist. Let's get into it, right? That is your hook for your video. I'm still scrolling. It says, ooh, the ultimate San Diego travel guide. I do have travel guide here. So maybe I'll do my own video on that. I love it. I love the phrasing of it. The ultimate... San Diego travel guide. So great. I love that idea. Period. Slide. <laughs> okay. Now if you're like, okay, Millie, I don't want to create educational content. What do I do? Well, maybe instead of like food, let's do food. For example, San Diego food spots in 2023, maybe instead of it being educational, I'll say my favorite San Diego food spot Oh, maybe I'll do coffee. Get a little bit more specific. Coffee shops. And that could be more of like a vlog. It doesn't have to be educational. So I'm I'm just taking these phrases and I'm turning it into a video idea that excites me. And it's giving me this full list of video ideas that I can then plug into my content calendar. So the three types of content that you want to rotate posting about. The first one, search-based content. We just did this. This is the search-based content, basically using those search engines to come up with, the, with your video ideas. And the great thing about search-based content, which is why I have it at 70%, is you can, these videos are the videos that you can plan and batch ahead of time. You can make a video for December right now. Like you can plan ahead, use SEO or those search search engines to generate video ideas that will work whenever you want to post them. So that's what I love about search-based content and why I have it at 70%. These percentages are my personal preferences. You can adjust it per your liking and I'll, I'll tell you more about that. And then the next one, 20% is trending content. This is more so utilizing trending sounds, trending memes, trending news alerts that's happening in your industry, basically anything that's happening in the now, where if you were to try to do it in two months, it's already, it's gone. The trend is lost. <laughs> you you miss the trend, you miss the wave. Trending content, I like to do 20% of my content trending. And then the last 10% is self-satisfying content. And this is just you as a creator, creating whatever the heck you want, right? You're a creator. You want to have creative freedom and not feel like you're trapped in a box. So you don't have to always stick in a niche if you don't want to. So maybe 10% of your content every month is like whatever you, that fart you want to do. Maybe I want to do a day in my life video. Maybe I want to show a coffee vlog of me hitting up coffee shops in my town, right? So I like to do 10% of my content 
whatever the heck I want so that I'm still satisfied as a creator. To visualize this in calendar form, I have this example where let's say I have 14 videos that I want to post in September. Using this 70, 20, 10 rule that again, it's my preferred method because I like to batch ahead. That's why 70 is so big. But if you don't like to batch ahead and you prefer to like create on the whim and have spontaneity, you could adjust those percentages. This is just my preference. 70%, we have nine videos are going to be search based, based videos. That means nine videos I can record in August and get them ready to post already. Then three of the videos will be trending sounds. So maybe that week, scroll on TikTok, find a trending sound or a meme, hop on the trend once a week, right? And then 10% of that content for the month is self-satisfying content where I can, again, do whatever the heck I want. To visualize this for YouTube creators, um, this is like for standard. You're making like four videos a month. You're posting once a week. So maybe the 70, 20, 10 doesn't math. It doesn't math correctly. So instead what I do, I do 50, 25, 25, where two videos search-based content, one video is trending, and one video is self-satisfying. For example, for myself, let's say two videos I do are search-based, right? We have, if I had to start from zero on YouTube, this is what I would do, and then how to unlock your social media growth SEO tips. Those are very search-friendly. I used the search engines to come up with these video ideas. Next is a trending one. So again, trending doesn't have to be holiday content. If you can make it holiday content, do it because we're going into the holiday season. But for me, holiday content doesn't make sense. So instead, I go with what's trending in my industry. I'm going to do social media news alerts and updates, right? Attract those people who want to stay in the know and want the latest drama on Elon Musk, okay? And then 25% or one video will be a self-satisfying video of maybe it's a new style video I've never done before. Maybe it's a new vlog that I've never done before, right? I just get to kind of expand and try things out as a creator. So then what you're going to do is take the ideas that we brainstormed together or that you're going to brainstorm and you're going to plug in those search based ideas into your calendar and leave room for those days that you want to do trending posts or self-satisfying content. Okay. Leave room for spontaneity if you want room for spontaneity. So for those of you who are like, okay, I'm ready. I want to take action. I want to start plugging this in and seeing results. You can. What blows my mind is out of all the people who are here today, there's going to be a handful of you, a bunch of you who stick to this plan, who post consistently, who show up consistently, and who are going to see these results. This is going to be you by the end of the year. This is going to be some of you by the end of the year. And that, I love that for you. What promise do you need to make for, to yourself for you to show up and do this for the next four months? Write that down in your notebook, in your journal, on a sticky note, put that up in your wherever, <laughs> in your bathroom, I don't know, by your toilet, wherever you go every day, so that you could see it every day and make that promise to yourself. For those of you who are asking, so now what's next? What are the next steps? Basically, take everything that you just learned, apply it, and make a promise to yourself. Commit to posting for the next four months because you could see incredible results, transformations, just like Stephanie saw when she committed to posting for four months. If you're somebody who is interested in growing on Instagram specifically and you want a little bit more guidance on the whole entire Instagram strategy, you can check out the links in the description. I do have an Instagram course called The Modern Influencer, which is what Stephanie, Kelly, and Donna all took, so you can check that out. If you're somebody who's interested in growing on YouTube or TikTok specifically, you can join the waitlist for my course bundle, the BSP model. I do have a YouTube course in there and a TikTok course, so you'll be the first to know when it is launched in 2024. If you've made it this far, then comment the secret phrase, I'm getting out of my own way, down below, and I will see you in the next one. Follow your joy. Bye.